Hello people, I'm Data from JGX and we are back with another video of the Mac Lab series. Today we are analyzing the Rothneck. Why? Because it got recently quirked in the last patch and some variants became actually very interesting. First we're starting with the hitboxes. Uh, the hitboxes are pretty bad. It's a humanoid Mac so it's pretty easy to pick specific components when you are targeting this Mac. At least the cockpit is pretty small despite what it looks like. But it would actually be a bad Mac in terms of tanking if it didn't have survival quirks. But it has them. So the survival quirks actually offset and balance a bit of the fact that the shape isn't great. So overall the Mac isn't too tanky but it isn't also too fragile because it has a huge load of quirks. Uh, now, since the new patch, we can look at the base quirks from uh, the Mac Lab. We don't have to go in the store anymore like we used to do in the old um, Mac reviews because now, from the Mac Lab, it uh, will split the base quirks in grey up there from the ones that come from the skill tree. Uh, I'd like to point out that right now these ones are on sale so it will be pretty easy for you to experiment what I'm about to tell you here. Uh, I'll start with the most interesting ones, uh, the ones that are actually pretty strong, pretty meta, and then I'll tell you which ones are pretty shit. Uh, starting from the agility first, uh, the agility is in line with the other mechs of the category, like acceleration, 27, 29 and a half D cell, 65 turn rate, torso turn rate, 99. It is not outstanding, it is not bad, it moves just like the other 65, 70, 75 tonners, so nothing special here. Uh, the most interesting one is the 3A, pulse laser range, pulse laser duration, and a generic 10 heat on top of the usual Rothneck survival quirks. I'm putting uh, three, four large poles in one ear med, TC1 for a slightly extra range, one arm empty to um, get another double heat sink in here. Uh, the way you use it is that you peak up high. I, you could alpha strike because there is not much ghost heat but you should shoot like everything except one and then the last large pulse later or you can shoot like two and this one on the top, two and this one on the top, if you prefer. So the mech is pretty good because on top of having a lot of survival, it also has nice offensive quirks, pulse laser range, that's why I went with large pulses, generic heat, and excellent mounts. This is a vertical peak, so you find a hill and you peak from above. Same concept, but different weapons with the BLT Hero Rothenek. Uh, cooldown heat and velocity, just generic quirks, but it has four ballistics high mounted, so I went with four Ultra 2s. Why four Ultra 2s? Because if you try to go uh, with uh, Ultra 5s, it's lagging. Ah, guys, this is another tip, it's very important. When it lags like this and you cannot put stuff shit in and out, it's because the engines are open. If you close the engine, close the sensors, close everything, it's not gonna lag anymore. So back to the Mac. If I wanted to put AC5s, I would need to go with uh, an LFE because of the slots. Problem is that I don't have ammo. I cannot do an Excel. So the build is either four Ultra 2s like that, too many ammo, put a PPC. No, it doesn't handle the heat. You don't have enough heat sinks to run an extra PPC. The way you could run an extra PPC is by developing less heat. The way you do it is by putting LB 2s. So this is another interesting build. 4 LB2s, an ERPPC in the arm, you put 
back of the arm or in the arm engines, you must go excel. And then the rest is ammunition. Uh, why do I keep going Excel? People may ask, is it Excel safe? Is it safe to run an Excel on these ones? Uh, the question is irrelevant. Because if you don't put an Excel, you either don't have enough firepower or you are too slow. So it doesn't matter if it is Excel safe or not. Because if you don't put an Excel, you either don't have the weapons and you won't do shit, or you don't have the speed, and you will be out of position. Of course, it's not Excel safe. It's risky to put an Excel in this because the side torsos are big. But it's also true that it has the armor of an assault. 78, 59, it's pretty high for a 65 tonner with high mounts. It's basically, I'd say it's mad cat level of armor, is it? Let's see. More or less, 84, 48. 84, 48 versus Seventy-eight, fifty-nine. It's basically ninety tonner level of armor. So, hey, put Excel and get those extra weapons and and get that extra speed in. So these two are the best. Another good one is the one A. This build was done previously on uh, on the other one, two AC tens and an MRM thirty. It was done on the two A. Somehow the 1A got even more quirks, cooldown and velocity, and uh, and therefore you can do the same build on both. On the 1A it's going to be slightly better. 15 cooldown, 20 velocity. Uh, 15 cooldown, 10 velocity. So you just do on this one and you don't buy the 2A. This one has extra energy range, but what am I going to do? Like put a light PPC in the CT and downgrade the MRM doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, because I don't have the heat to run an extra weapons and I cannot afford putting heat sinks. Uh, you need to find a nice compromise between how many weapons you put and your heat dissipation. You can put as many weapons as you want, but if you don't have the heat sinks to run those weapons, uh, the mech is going to be pretty bad. Uh, how do you use this? This is obviously a right side peaker at four to 500 meters. This missile basically shoots from the cockpit and these ones have a perfect sync. I'll show you how it looks like. So this is again a pretty good mech. I'd say you could run this one, the 1A, with this build. For sure the laser vomit one, the 3A. Uh, the hero one, it's pretty good because of the convergence. Uh, it's, how does it compare to a Jaeger mech? Uh, on a Jaeger mech the convergence is a little bit more fucked up because the, it's wider. And it has this big thing on top of the head. So when you peek, they see this stuff above the head. And the convergence, convergence is uh, how it is. On the Roth neck instead, it has better convergence. And the mounts are better. It doesn't have jam chance, though. It will jam a little bit more. Uh, but it has heat. The Jaeger mech has jam chance. It has more range, cooldown, but it doesn't have heat. Uh, the survival is pretty much the same. I'd say that they are more or less the same mech. More or less the same mech. Uh, so this is plays pretty much like your Jaeger mech DD. This is pretty unique though. You should get this laser vomit one. This one for sure, the 1A. This one is uh, the 2A is a bad copy of a 1A. 1B uh, missile heat gen, missile velocity, and a thick cooldown. It means MRMs if you have high mounts. This is decent, it's good because it has high DPS, good mounts, blah blah blah, and so on. But I'd say it's a bad copy of. 
the Warhammer 7S that has even more velocity, which is key for the MRMs. It does those, plus some more lasers, or I can just put two MRM-40s. And they're both bad copies of the Butter B with MRMs, because this has jump jets and can glitch with the jump jets, or then the Dervish, which is over-buffed like crazy. This is OP. This is crazy. Like the quick draw four was one of the best MRMers before the cauldron, just with uh, cooldown 20%. And somehow this dervish, on top of having the missile Bedors that uh, make him tank more, 20% extra tanking, if you hit these torsos while the Bedors are closed, it gets missile cooldown 10, heat gen 10, missile range 10, missile spread 10, missile velocity 15. This is cooked. It also has a nice bugging, glitchy jump jet animation. So, can this Rothneck do something with MRMs? Yes, it can. But there are other mechs at the moment that are way more broken. You can afford running an LFE in this. This is a plus, though. Uh, going forward, the other hero, uh, the R, thick quirks on UX. Uh, therefore, you need to put UX to exploit fully the quirks. I put extra small lasers because this is a brawler, basically. Why is a brawler? Because the mounts are too wide. You can't reliably peek with this. It's a pretty Pepega mech. Uh, it's gonna do good in a brawl, but that's pretty much it. You must run an Excel because if you wanted to run a standard, <laughs> you would have to go so slow, and you would never get into a fight at this speed with this kind of mech. Uh, is it good? Ah, it's so and so. It's gonna develop an insane amount of burst DPS in Brawl because these UX are not gonna jump as much. It has jump, chance, velocity, so they are more accurate. Heat gen, ballistic cooldown. This one will shit out a lot of burst DPS because the small lasers will not contribute to the heat output of the mech. But the, pr the shape is pretty shit, and uh, it has to fully expose. Uh, if, unless you already have this mech and you want to find a use for this, I wouldn't use it. Another way in which you could use it, if you wanted to try something more peaky, like more peekaboo, you could just ignore this arm, reduce the amount of uh, it's lagging again because of this shit open. Now that it's closed, it's not gonna lag anymore. Um, you can try something with the high mounts, and you could make it a right side peeker. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have any. Uh, generic, just ballistic cooldown, missile cooldown. It doesn't have any energy quirks. Uh, this could be nice with uh, so a couple of regular PPCs or light PPCs like this. Like you, if you fit it like this, and then you put heat sinks because at this point you need heat sinks. It could be a nice right side peeker like this because the mounts are decent. It's going to right side pick this way. Uh, it's a bad version of a Calafract 3D with two ACs and the three light PPCs. So if you want to make sense with this mech, try this build or the brawling one that I was suggesting you. But if you don't have it, it doesn't make sense to buy it. Uh, moving forward, the PH, that's the uh, other hero. This one has three heroes, I think. Yep. And uh, it's a bad version of the Orion, of the Brawling Orion. Missile spread, missile velocity, cooldown, pretty generic works. You can do a 3 SRAM 6 as an AC-20 with a light engine. If you have it, you can do it this way. 
if you don't have it, don't buy it. It's pretty papega. It does what the Orion VA does. So if you want that kind of playstyle, I see 20SRMs on a heavy mech, just choose the Orion VA. Ballistic cool, ballistic velocity, SRM range, SRM velocity, missile cool, the missile heat, gen heat, and you go on SC24, SRM 6s this way. So don't spend MCs, don't waste MCs on the PH Rothneck. 1C, I have no idea what the fuck I should do with this because they give me SRM quirks, machine gun quirks. So ideally, what they want me to do is to do a 1, 2, 3, Four, then it gives me machine gun quirks, so I'm gonna go like uh, heavy machine gun one, two, and three. The problem is that it needs speed to perform with this kind of build. I would like to chalk in an Excel 350 on this one, but I can't because it is engine capped. So if this one could put an, an Excel 350, I'd go maximum speed, XL 350, and I'd go with this build. But this build doesn't make sense because the mech is too slow for that task. So now I'm going to show you briefly how it looks like when you bring them on the battlefield. As for the Rocknick 3A, I already made a gameplay video on this one. I'll put the link. Uh, at the end of the video, so if you want to see this getting played, uh, I will, you can just go watch that. So I'll start from uh, the UAC Rothnack. This is again a high peaking one, high mounts, high peak, so I uh, cannot really use it here on the spawn, because I'm down in the, I spawn down in the bottom. But the concept is pretty simple. And uh, maybe I put too much ammo. Yes, I like to farm. Uh, you can strip a couple of Target tons of ammo deployed. and uh, you can put a faster engine. Target destroyed. Heat level critical. Heat level critical. And then when you're hot, you go hide. But we already shit out something like 400 damage. Then um, the MRM one, it's pretty obvious. There are a lot of MRM Max. You know how it is. It's just an MRM mech without jump shots. Uh, the other one that is very interesting is uh, the 1A. It gives you the extra options, option with those AC tens. It's going to be pretty good because it has a uh, velocity, and velocity helps a lot with these projectile-based weapons. It's, when I, what I mean when I say this is a right side peaker is that the MRM shoots from the cockpit. So you can easily do this, you peak. Acquired. It does a lot of damage. It's a good farm. It isn't even that hot. Why am I running Excel? Because if I don't run Excel, I'm gonna go something like 50 kph, or I'm just gonna lose an AC-10, or I'm gonna lose an MRM. I can't afford it. The mech just becomes not viable. There is a point where if you remove too many weapons, it becomes uh, a light with more sides. Uh, not like a mech of the lower class with more sides and worse agility and if you put an engine that is too big it becomes a mech that goes too fast with not enough weapons so you need to find the good compromise here uh, i cannot go lfe 
I don't have I cannot remove ammo, I cannot remove weapons, so I cannot I cannot. That's it. So you guys have to put Excel here or you just won't use this mech at all. In the end, which ones should you buy? The 3A, for sure. The 1A, for sure. Uh, if you have some MCs, the BLT is not bad. The other ones, really, you can skip them. They, they do stuff that other mechs already do. If you have them, you can try building them the way I did. But if you don't have them, don't go crazy buying them. It doesn't make that much sense. Okay, guys, uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, remember to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, share the content, and I'll catch you guys next time.